take a little more than 15 minutes, and we are set at a time certain to hear the, um, the Senator Roth's bill. If you wouldn't mind giving me... Take you don't think it'll no, take 15 minutes? No, absolutely not. This is a bill with no opposition. Oh, very good. Then if that's the case, let's go ahead and with file item 9. And I will be brief. It's all, it's Madam it's Chair, I'd like to move the bill. Yes, well, I you. guess we, we will be brief, won't it? All right. Why don't you go and be, appreciate the motion, which we'll hear as soon as we at least get uh, Senator... I ask for your support for this uh, This is bill. SB 385, colleagues. Yes. Okay. Please... Uh, please uh, we have go a ahead. Motion. And I'm happy with moving the bill. If if you would require any information, it's well, why don't you go ahead and, and you know there are people who are listening in and perhaps we should give them a chance to know what you're presenting. Uh, thank you. The, uh, this bill would implement the uh, the new standards with relation to removing chromium six from California's water supply. Under this measure, the public water systems. Uh, that uh, provide water to our state would be authorized to submit a compliance plan to the State Water Resources Control Board. Uh, the proposed plan would describe the steps the system is taking and will take to achieve the standard by the earliest feasible date. We've been working with the water districts across the state to implement this very important measure, and it seems that we have everyone's support to move in this in this direction. I understand so. that you have agreed to accept the proposed amendment that's on page eight of the uh, analysis on page four that of the correct, bill. That is correct, Madam Chair. Very Chef. good. So well, those will be deemed authors' amendments. Witnesses in support, you can be very brief. I think you're winning. Go ahead. Cindy Tuck with the Association of California Water Agencies. We urge an I vote. All righty, next witness. Uh, Steve Bigley with the Coachella Valley Water District. We happen to be one of the agencies that would be most impacted by this rule. We've been working diligently. We started eight years ago. We've been doing pilot tests. We've identified the treatment technologies that we need to implement. It's going to be a little over $200 million. We expect to move rapidly through the process as quickly as possible and complete the construction by mid-2019. And we certainly hope that we have this bill so that we can maintain compliance with drinking water standards while we work adamantly timely and cost effectively to comply with this new rule. Thank you very much. Next witness. I'm Jackie Cernangiano with the Consumer Attorneys of California. We appreciate the authors of work and the sponsors of this bill. We think it's um, a good step in the in direction of compliance and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses in support? Andrea Ventura with Clean Water Action. We worked with the author and the sponsors and we support this bill. Thank you. Kathy Cole with the Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Water District of Southern California in support of the bill. That's okay. You can move slower. We still have 10 minutes. Jonathan Clay on behalf of the India Water Authority in support. Thank you. Danielle Blasa with the California Municipal Utilities Association in strong support of the bill. Thank you. Next witness. Bill Brennan representing the Santa Inez River Water Conservation District in Santa Barbara County, also in strong support. Thank you, sir. Lori Johnson on behalf of the City of Watsonville in strong support. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Capitolo on behalf of the California Water Association in support. Thank you. Mary Henrici, Rio Linda, Alberta Water in Northern Sacramento County. Uh, this current standard affects 55% of my supply. We're in strong support. Thank you. Uh, Dan York, Sacramento Suburban Water District in strong support. Thank you, sir. Are there uh, any witnesses here in opposition? All right, seeing none, I... You know, this issue of hexavalent and chromium is one that's been around for quite some time. I remember participating in hearings on this back uh, in the Aaron Brockovich days about 15 years ago. Uh, it's a very serious problem. This, this we know that, the, you know, chrome 6 is a carcinogen. And we don't want our families and ourselves and our communities drinking water that can cause cancer. Um, so it's my hope and expectation that we will have this problem resolved within the next several years. Um, in the meantime, of course, there will be notice given. And uh, I just, uh, uh, I recognize that the, the job is still far from being done, but it is my strong hope that we are able to, uh, to address this um, as quickly as possible and that we won't be back here in 2020 seeking further extensions. This is public health and safety involved here. So um, just wanted to make that as clear as I could. And Senator Monning, you had... Uh, yeah, just briefly. I, I want to thank the author for bringing this forward. I represent one of the communities affected, at least one in Watsonville. 
and share the concerns of the chair that the goal is to provide safe drinking water. The problem is we have uh, low income communities and the cost to remediate, um, if the state's gonna require hitting that level, then we should shoulder the obligation of providing the resources. This provides a path that way. I believe Prop 1, um, supported by the voters of California, some of that uh, money will be available for support for these uh, remediation projects. So thank you for taking leadership on this. Glad to move the bill at the appropriate time. Already got moved. I'll second it. <clears throat> thank you. Any other questions? All right, we have a motion by Senator Anderson. Would you like to close? Madam Chair, you heard uh, one, one district say that 55% of the supply was affected by chromium-6. There are some uh, that, are, that, that uh, have 100% of their supply. So this, this uh, action that the state is taking forward to remove chromium-6 is probably the biggest uh, endeavor that we're undertaking to increase uh, safety in our water supply. It's a, it's a monumental task. It's gonna it's gonna cost a lot of money, require a lot of resources, but the the end game is to ensure that people are drinking healthy water, and and this this uh, measure is required to implement this uh, this strategy successfully. So I hope that all of you can uh, support it. Thank you very much. All debate having ceased, do pass as amended to Senate approves. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Jackson, aye. Jackson, aye. Morlock. Morlock, I. Anderson. Aye. Anderson, I. Hertzberg. Aye. Hertzberg, I. Leno. Aye. Leno, I. Monning. Monning, I. Wykowski. Aye. Wykowski, I. Thank you, Senators. At seven to zero, that bill is out. Thank you very much, Senator Wayso. Could I have just a moment? With the indulgence of the committee, I would uh, like an opportunity to jump out of order and present the state bar bill. If I may do that, it should take five minutes. I'm told there's no opposition. Would there be any objection to that? About the... Oh, okay, great. All right. So... Uh, Colleagues, we're going to go quickly to file item 11, which is the state bar dues bill. And if uh, I'm going to pass the uh, gavel over to my co-chair, Senator Morla. My first shot at this, so if you could exercise some grace. Okay. There it is. Is this working? Is this working? This, yeah. I'm Good. working. Okay. Thank you. Item number Thank 11, you. Senate Bill 387. Senator Jackson, Thank please you. begin. Thank you. See, we can screw in a light bulb. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. On behalf of the State Bar of California, I'm pleased to present the annual dues bill. This bill will permit the State Bar to charge membership dues for 2016 of up to $390 for active members. That amount is identical to last year. Thus, there would be no net increase for members. And as noted in the analysis, the State Bar is currently undergoing a performance audit of its critical function of disciplinary activity. Given that the State Bar's primary role is one of public protection, a robust discipline system is a critical component of ensuring that the public is adequately protected from bad actors. The State Auditor's Report will be coming out next month, and I look forward to working with the State Bar 
and the auditor on implementing any recommendations that come out of that report. And with me, I have Craig Holden, who is the president of the State Bar of California, to testify in support of the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. I'm Craig Holden, State Bar President, and I urge your support of this bill. The State Bar of California has a statutory mandate to protect the public, and that's what the board has focused on. As Senator Jackson said, our focus is on our discipline system, and I'm proud to say that uh, since we had a backlog of over 2,600 uh, complaints by lawyers in 2010, we've cut that down by 90% over the last five years, so the backlog has been reduced. We've paid out 100% of all qualifying claims under, under our Victim Restitution Fund, which is the Client Security Fund. We've done substantial work in the immigration area protecting the public. We've also done tremendous work in promoting legal services and through your support have been able to fund $6 million in legal services funding. So I urge your support. I assure you that we've got a vigilant board that is committed to the mission of public protection and thank you for uh, this opportunity. Thank you for coming. Senator Hertzberg. Mr. President, did you get paid for your service? I do not. I'm a volunteer. And how many hours do you put in a, a week on this volunteer job? Sometimes uh, it seems like 40. <laughs> it seems full time sometimes. Well, thanks, man. We really appreciate it. I know it's. I know the answer to the question. That's good. I was answer. That was the answer to the question. <laughs> but I really appreciate it. Now, the last question uh, is: Since I'm an active member of the bar, and this 300 and some dollars applies to me, do, can I vote on this bill? <laughs> <laughs> That's I guess a good not. question, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Aren't you an active member? I am. Yeah. Another active yeah. member. Senator Money. Before active, I don't think any votes here, man. You're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, need all the, we need all the votes. But aren't we voting again? Aren't... Senator, That's right. Senator Hertzberg, were you proposing to double his salary? Is that what you're <laughs> I, I, think, I think there would be a conflict if we were voting to, uh, to, re to reduce the fees. Yeah. <laughs> Senator Money. All right. Senator Jackson, I had a quick question. Uh, do we have any opposition? I would, uh, I don't know that we do, but I'm wondering if, I guess not. Okay. I'm running this meeting. You are, you are, but, but we need to, we need, since it's your first, I thought I'd try to help you as subtly as I possibly could, but at any rate, since there's no opposition, very good. Is there any opposition? Please, would someone come and oppose this bill? <laughs> Seeing no opposition. Uh, okay. All right. Very good. Uh, Senator, Senator Jackson, uh, reviewing the financial statements for the state bar, the pension system that they're using is CalPERS. Is that correct? I believe that's the case. Yes. So I'm, I, I'm seeing that CalPERS is raising their due uh, their their contribution rates. Uh, have you accounted for that? Is there something that you need to consider when you look at your dues, or is that something that's going to be reflected in future years? I don't think that affects uh, the dues bill presently, but we continue to pay attention to that. Okay, thank you. There, there will be. I'm sorry, Senator. Are there any, Senator Wykoski? I had a question. I was glad to see that the voluntary checkoff for legal aid has raised 5.5 million dollars. I know, Mr. President, you're well aware that we're. $20 million short of what we used to have for legal aid when we were in crisis. Can you explain or can you give me your plan on how you're going to tackle this justice gap that we have for legal aid during your tenure? Thank you, uh, Senator Wykowski. You're exactly right. There has been a substantial uh, decrease in the amount of funding available for legal services while at the same time since the Great Recession in 2008, uh, as you noted, we've had a substantial uptick. Over six million Californians have fallen below the poverty line, many of them children in need of legal services in life critical areas, housing, shelter, food, and the like. And so what we've done is we've done the traditional, but we've also been innovative. Traditionally, the method has been to ask lawyers to donate more money, ask the public to donate more money, to volunteer more time, via pro bono, but we're also looking at innovative measures, uh, many of which include um, uh, assisting um, uh, pro per litigants, uh, 
through navigators that help them get through the courtroom when they can't afford a lawyer and looking at programs that will address uh, those who are above the poverty line but have only modest means and can't afford a lawyer. So we've got a lot of innovative programs that we're looking at that are in the pipeline and we're excited about those because those go beyond the traditional methods of promoting pro bono and raising funds. Do my, do my members have any further questions or comments? Senator Jackson, would you like to close? You have seven seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lot to be done here. I, I will say that the State Bar has indicated and been so far very, very helpful, uh, forward thinking in the work that we ha see ahead of us, and uh, I look forward to working with them and then uh, crafting a bill that reflects a lot of the recommendations we'll see at the end of this audit in the next month. And with that, I'd ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Did someone already make a motion? Uh, okay. Then we have a motion. Uh, let's go ahead and call the roll. And this is for a do pass the Senate floor. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Morlock? Aye. Morlock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Hertzberg? Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Wykowski? Aye. Wykowski, aye. Passes 7 0. I will gladly give you the gavel back. Thank you. Madam not, Chair. not a bad job, Senator Thank Morlock. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. All right, this is the time scheduled for a special setting uh, of uh, SB 251 by Senator Roth. I'd like to uh, we'll take a five minute uh, break while we uh, get ready for this particular item. So we'll be back in five minutes. All right, we are back in session. Thank you all for your indulgence. This is the time certain for, uh, in a special order for SB 251 by Senator Roth. Uh, colleagues, um, there is a mock-up of um, an item here that um, uh, I know Senator Roth has been working on this all weekend. I hope he made sure he got the Mother's Day gifts to the appropriate women before he spent the rest of his weekend working on this bill, but I do know that he's worked very hard and diligently on it, and I, I'm assuming there are copies of the mock-up for people. All right, here. And they're also referenced in the analysis. So with that, uh, Senator Roth, thank you uh, for being here and for your good work, and if you would please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair, colleagues. Um, I'm privileged to present Senate Bill 251 today. First, let me say that I'm pleased to accept the amendments proposed by the committee and set forth uh, in the analysis and the material that's been placed in front of you. You know, 25 years ago in 1990, uh, President George H.W. Bush signed the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act, probably the most sweeping civil rights legislation to be enacted since the Civil Rights Act of 1964. As you know, at the time, the Americans with Disabilities Act recognized that a majority of public facilities across the nation, restaurants, movie theaters, and stores, were simply inaccessible to the disabled. And the ADA sought to address that problem by generally requiring that access barriers be removed. Some businesses, unfortunately, were not interested in complying. But for the many that were, compliance was not easy. In some cases, construction standards related to the ADA were complicated and frankly contradictory. To illustrate a 2006 uh, Hastings Women's Law Journal article claimed, and I quote, that a single bathroom had to meet at least 95 different standards from the height of the toilet paper dispenser to the exact placement of handrails. And we know that in 1991, when the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission issued its ADA handbook with accessibility guidelines, the handbook itself was over 600 pages long. 
Since then, of course, efforts have been made to conform standards and to make things easier for business to comply. But the point is, it's still complicated. And unfortunately, over the past 25 years, while state and local government, and frankly, many of the stakeholders in this room today, the non-governmental stakeholders, have spent a lot of time fine-tuning the ADA enforcement process under federal and state law, the stick, as I call it, we've not, in my opinion, devoted enough time, effort, and money to educating and training business operators and providing ADA access specialists to help ensure access for all. In fact, I submit that if you ask a small business operator who received a building inspector's permit to operate today, if he or she was good to go with regard to ADA access issues, he or she would probably say, of course. Unfortunately, we know that's not usually the case. Actually, not only do many local government building departments not inspect to ADA standards, at least some, if not many, inspectors are confused as to the actual ADA standards to be applied. This is not a good situation. This bill attempts to remedy that by focusing on education, by focusing on training, and by focusing on access to help. So what does it do? And I'll try to include the amendments that I had, the committee suggested amendments that I've accepted. The bill directs the Commission on Disability Access to provide advice and step up the education and training of businesses regarding access standards. It directs the state architect to establish a web-based list of access specialists so that businesses can find help when they need it. It requires local building departments to provide education material about ADA access requirements and to expedite the issuance of building permits to correct ADA access issues. It provides a tax incentive to help businesses eliminate ADA access barriers. It allows small businesses, small businesses, a short period of time. 15 days from date of notice to fix a very limited category of issues such as posting the correct ADA signs or freshening up the paint on disabled parking slots, slots that meet the standard, without a lawsuit or statutory penalties. Claims for actual inj injuries, injunctive relief were excluded from this moratorium. And finally, for any business that goes to the expense of hiring a certified access specialist and securing an inspection, by the way, a process which I've been told can cost two to $5,000, the bill gives that business 90 days from the date of the inspection, the inspection, to fix all of the access issues before the court process can begin. The problems are not fixed. All available remedies, including the statutory penalties, apply, and again, Actual injuries, injunctive relief are excluded from the moratorium. Now, colleagues, I think um, you know me, and I'm not trying to undercut anybody's civil rights here. I'm not, I should tell you, unmindful of the access barriers that present to the disabled in communities. In fact, you may not know this, but um, in 2005, my young brother-in-law by the name of Don, he was then in his early 40s, was diagnosed with a very, very, very serious illness. Frankly, he wasn't expected to live. His heart was weak, he had diabetes. Uh, they saved him. In the end, though, he lost his leg above the knee. He was only given five years to live, and he died almost five years to the day in March of 2010. Unfortunately, during that short period of life that that young man had, his prosthesis didn't work. So he was largely wheelchair dependent. And every day I was privileged to be with him, at his request, I helped him navigate restaurants, restrooms, ramps, or lack thereof, and other public facilities, mostly in his wheelchair, but occasionally in a walker. It was very difficult for him, but he never complained, I will tell you that parking lot signs and faded parking lot striping never stopped him. But restaurant table location and restroom design sometimes did. So because of Don and the disabled individuals here with us and around the state, I am committed, I will tell you, to dramatically reforming ADA compliance in this state with education, 
with training and a fair opportunity to correct ADA access deficiencies under some very limited circumstances. I view this bill as a first step, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Senator. Uh, witnesses in support. Thank you, Senator. I'm Brian Kabatek, the former president of Consumer Attorneys of California, speaking in support of SB 251. Consumer Attorneys is seeking in good faith to find a solution to problem plaguing many California communities. How to make buildings more accessible for people with disabilities, while at the same time stopping the abusive practice of some attorneys who are filing multiple lawsuits against mostly small businesses and seeking fees, not compliance. We view both of these problems as significant and deserving of a solution. While we fully understand that the current contents of SB 251 are not a final solution, indeed there is no easy solution, and that the language and concepts need work, SB 251 offers a good first step. We appreciate the time and effort that Senator Roth has put into this draft and want to work with him and others as the bill proceeds. We're joining with those in the business community who want a reasonable and fair solution this year and will continue to work with those in the disability community. Consumer Attorneys wants to encourage compliance and stop, once and for all, the small number of attorneys who are taking advantage of our law. At the same time, we want to work towards a solution that helps commercial landlords and merchants upgrade their business property to comply with disability laws. It has been a quarter of a century since those disability laws came into being. But too many businesses remain out of compliance. Access for all is a civil right that should remain our goal. COC is open to other solutions, such as an amnesty program for businesses that hire a certified access specialist or a CAS specialist. The ultimate goal here is to make all businesses in California accessible for all Californians. Although we agree and recognize that the current contents of SB 251 need work, we believe that under the guidance of Senator Roth, this committee, and others that we can indeed address this problem this year. COC is committed to working with everyone to reach a fair solution in 2015. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. Madam Chair and members of the committee, Jennifer Burr on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce and we are in support of SB 251 and thanks Senator Roth for authoring this bill. We agree with the comments of the consumer attorneys uh, that we want to improve access for all individuals. Our employers, our businesses want to have open doors and have uh, access for all of their customers and, and that includes those who are disabled and to the extent that SB 251 will help those businesses become accessible by allowing them a moratorium in which to uh, implement the, the uh, issues that have been addressed in a CASP inspection, we believe that will improve access. Right now, too many businesses are being subject to claims of litigation or threats of litigation with penalties and attorney's fees attached to it, and they're forced to devote their financial resources to those claims, to those threats of litigation, instead of devoting their resources to improving their facilities to make sure they're accessible. So we appreciate SB 251 and to the extent that it uh, provides this moratorium for those businesses who have proactively sought out uh, ways in which they can become accessible and provides an education and training aspect as well to make sure that businesses are aware of what their responsibilities are. For those reasons, we are in support. Thank you very much. And as was noted that uh, this is a, a table of strange bedfellows, but delighted to see it. <laughs> We're sending you to Palestine, uh, Senator Roth. Yes. 